Hello, so I'm filming. Hi, I'm filming this video to hopefully guide you through the PowerPoint presentation that I sent you. So, have your presentation with you. Take your notebook, your book, because you might need it. And I'm just going to go through it and maybe pause at some parts and explain to you whatever needs to be explained. So, the goal for today the goal is to use gerunds and infinitives to talk about personalities. So, you know what gerunds are and what infinitives are. So, we're going to learn a new form or a new way to use them through this unit. Well, this unit is about personality. So I have here a small question for you. Do you think colors give a message? Is it the same to um, make an advertisement like a McDonald's advertisement with green or yellow or red? Is that the same? Or do you think that colors give a message? Take a minute to think about it. Here I have some words with different colors. You can hopefully see it. And just try to think about this answer before continuing. So in this unit, we have basically this information. Colors have a meaning. Normally, reds and yellows are more focused on food. Um, colors like green and blue are more focused on the relaxing things or things that are supposed to calm you. And in the book, it says that pink normally makes you be tired, or it makes you feel more tired. So, I just want you to take a look at this unit in the book, look at the vocabulary, look at the content by yourself, and here I'm going to focus a little bit more on the grammar. So, in page 75, you have a small conversation and you have some idioms. These idioms are, I'm pulling your leg, good point, to be on the wrong track, and to go with it. This, an idiom is an expression used in any language that is not a literal expression. You are not pulling anyone's leg. It is an expression, an idiomatic expression. So take a look at the conversation and guess the meaning of this in the activities from the book. And let's start before going to the book's topic. I want you to take a look at this, um, uh, this slide. We have the ING forms. It says, my sister is playing video games right now. Last night, my friends were sleeping, but I wasn't. We have the ING to talk about actions in progress. So you can use the verb with ing and you're talking about present continuous, past continuous, present perfect continuous, any continuous tense is talking about an action in progress. So the verb with ing is an action in progress. And we have another form to use the ing forms. This form we saw a couple of units before and it is to describe an experience. You remember that we were working with adjectives with ed and adjectives with ing. The ed is like I am bored, you are expressing your feeling. I am boring, you are expressing the experience of being with you. So my vacations were relaxing, you are describing the experience. No actions in progress. You are describing with an ING form your vacations in an adjective, relaxing. Speaking with Julio is very boring. You are not describing any action, just the experience which was boring. So, I have a question here. What's the verb in these sentences? And I have three sentences. My mom dislikes going to soccer games. Which one is the verb? Last night I decided to start exercising. What's the verb? Last year we began studying English. 
So take a minute to think about where is the verb. How can you identify the verbs? Think about the conjugation of the verb. If the sentence is in present, the verb is in present. If the sentence is in past, last night, last year, the verb is the action that happened in the past. For example, decided, began. Those are the verbs that are the main verb of the sentence. And after this verb, we have another verb. My mom dislikes going to soccer games. Last night I decided to start exercising. Last year we began studying English. These verbs are either gerunds, like going, studying, or infinitives, like to start. There are rules in English that tell you when to use a gerund and when to use an infinitive. There is no reason or no explanation really like, oh, these verbs are followed by infinitives and these verbs are followed by gerunds. Those are just the rules. So this is the grammar for today's unit, or the beginning of the grammar. Verbs followed by an infinitive or a gerund. So in the book you have lists. All of these verbs are followed by an infinitive, all of these verbs are followed by a gerund. So what you have to do is just look where the verb is and if it is followed by an infinitive or by a gerund. Some verbs are followed by any of the infinitive or gerund, but only a few of them. My mom dislikes going to soccer games. Dislike is always followed by a gerund. Last night I decided to start exercising. Decide is always followed by an infinitive. These verbs can be followed by a noun. For example, my mom dislikes soccer, and it's not a verb. But when you're talking about a, a, a verb, an action that you dislike, then it is with ing. I dislike going to soccer games. It is not correct to say, I dislike to go to soccer games. No, you have to use a gerund. Um, the sentence last night, I decided to start exercising. You cannot say, I decided starting exercising. No, you have to use an infinitive because that's the rule. Decide is followed by an infinitive. So, imagine that I give you the verb choose. The conjugation of the verb is present, past, past participle, gerund. And here we have some sentences. The verb choose is always followed by an infinitive. So it doesn't matter if the sentence is in present, in past, in present perfect, in present continuous. It doesn't matter. Choose will always be followed by an infinitive. Like in these sentences. You have the verb choose in present, in past, in present perfect, but it is always followed by the pink to go. We cho choose to go. She chose to go. I've chosen to go. But the to go is always the same because choose is always followed by an infinitive. Here in the presentation, I wrote some of the lists. You have them in the book. The point of adding this to the presentation is so you can see the examples of verbs followed by gerunds, you have the list, and then you have the examples of how the verb, this verb, can be in present, in past, in gerund, but the following verb always has to be a gerund. So, we have some examples here. Also with verbs followed by infinitives, you have the verbs. These can be in present, in past, in present perfect, any tense. But it will always be followed by an infinitive to go, to where, to start. So the verb changes, but the following verb doesn't. It's always an infinitive. And then you have this small list of verbs that can be followed either by an infinitive or a gerund, so that means that there is no difference. You can say, 
last year we began to study or last year we began studying. It's the same. Something you cannot do is say like here last year we began study. No, you have to use either an infinitive or a derivative. A very common mistake is with like. A lot of students say, I like play soccer. No, it has to be infinitive or gerund. I like to play soccer or I like playing soccer. But I like play doesn't exist. It's incorrect. Let's slide a picture of Scarlett Johansson and some sentences. The verb we are going to work with is quit. Quit is followed by a gerund. Quit filming is going to be the, the action that she's going to quit. So I have four sentences here and the four answers here. So take a minute to think about where these answers go in the sentences. The structure of the sentence is going to tell you how the verb is. As you can see, filming is always the same because quit is always followed by a gerund. So she never filming when she's tired, a routine, something she always does, she never quits, simple present, the verb with S, but filming, it's the same, gerund. Rumors say she's, she is a continuous tense, she's quitting filming, it doesn't matter that this is ing and then ing, it doesn't matter because quit can be quitting. That doesn't change the rule of following quitting by a gerund. Scarlett can't quit filming movies. Can't is followed by a verb in base form. Did she quit filming movies? Simple past. Okay, then we have the activities that you have to answer in the website. So go ahead and do this on your own. And after that, you have to think about this. You're going to send an audio of one and a half minutes talking about your personality using this topic, gerunds and infinitives. For example, this paragraph that says, I enjoy going out with my friends because I like to be with people. So you can use enjoy and then followed by a gerund because that is the rule. Something you like, like, remember, can be followed by an infinitive or a gerund. So take a look at the lists in the book. Think about which verbs you can use and then write the following verb as an infinitive or a gerund, depending on the list. In the list, in the list that I showed you, we have this one, verbs followed by an infinitive. And I have this example. Carla hopes to learn to play the guitar before August. Hopes is in the list of verbs followed by an infinitive. So, hopes to learn. To learn what? Learn is also in the list of verbs followed by an infinitive. So, she hopes to learn to play. So, the rules continue in the sentence. If you're using hope, continue with an infinitive. If your infinitive is learn, continue with an infinitive. Of course, you can use a noun. You can say, she hopes to learn Spanish. If you are going to continue with another action or another verb, it has to be an infinitive. It doesn't matter if you already have an infinitive. So I have this one as an example that you can do that. So just be careful with that. The rules are always the same. Even if you already applied the rule once, hopes to learn, the rules continue. Learn is in this list, so learn to play. So yes, it is correct to say 
to learn to play. So by the end of the day, you must have sent the activities on my English lab and the audio. Two activities today, and please look at the verbs in the grammar part of the book. I have the page here, so I'm going to put it on the screen. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask me. If not, then see you next time.